So we're going to learn to use our calculator to find a confidence interval when we do not know our population standard deviation. So sigma is not known. And we are going to do that with our substitute teacher data. So we can compare that to the answer that we got um, computed on slide 36. All right, so to do that, uh, slides 37 and 38 have instructions. I don't believe that all of you have gotten to the point of entering data into your calculator, so we are going to start there. So if you want to grab your calculator, and we are going to use the uh, stat um, command. So you are going to want to use the stat button. So hit that, so it's step number one into entering data. You are already on edit and you want to just press enter. So your enter button, just enter. And it takes you to this table. And so these are actually variable names. Uh, so we're gonna, for now, we just have one variable and we're gonna put it in and it's going to be called L1. So let's go back to what our data looks like. So I'm gonna put in that data uh, into L1. So if I go down here, I'm going to type 60 and then just enter and it will take me to the next line. And I can enter again, 56, hit enter, and 60, enter, let's see, 55, 70, 55, 60, 55. All right, and then... I always make sure I check. So we have, let's see, 60, 50, oh, page all the way up. Right, 60, 56, uh, 60, 55, 70, let's see, 70, 55, then 60, and then 55. All right, that is correct. And that is eight observations. All right, so that's going to save that in there for us. And to get out, we can go to quit, um, which is right above this. So second quit. And that actually saves that. So if you want to go back into stat, so I have stat, um, enter on edit, and you'll see that it's still saved in your L1. All right, so but I'm going to get out of there. So quit. So what you want to do, and we are, so there's two ways to do this. So one is if you are computing our confidence interval from the raw data. Um, and that's what we have. We have the raw data. We are not starting from a statistic. Okay, so that's the second option. Um, here would be if we were constructing our confidence interval having been, having been given um, X bar and S to start with. All right, so we'll, we have another example going through this um, that'll show you where sigma was known. So it's the same scenario, um, but for this particular, we actually have the data in this example. So what we need to do, we've already entered our data. Um, we are going to, again, use the stat command. So we have stat, um, but now we need to page over to test. So use your arrow to page, page over. And we then need to go down. So use your down arrow, so down, and keep going all the way down until you get to eight. And we are constructing a T confidence interval. So once you have the eight highlighted, you want to press enter. And that's where it gives you the option of either doing your interval from data or doing it from a statistics. Okay, so we want to do it from data, so I'll keep it there. I can enter, and then I want to, so I can page down. I do want to use the L1 variable. Um, so if I had put my data in one of the other columns, I would need to change that. Um, free, which stands for frequency, I want to leave it one. And what that means is that I've observed everything that I put in once. So that's, that's where we want to leave that. And then confidence level. So for our example, what did we do? We did a 99%. Okay, so that is, so currently that is at 99%. So I can leave it. 
and I can page down. So you want to um, end up on calculate and then press enter. And it thinks it calculates and let's do some checks. So X bar 58.875, our standard deviation is 5.083. And you'll notice that um, that's what you should have gotten when you were doing this uh, by hand or, well, by calculator, but you were calculating the statistics yourself. And notice what your confidence interval is. So 52.6 to 65.2. Right, so I rounded to one more decimal place um, than my raw data. So that was our rounding rule. And if you look on your calculator, that matches. So rounding 52.6 and 65.2. So you do need to know how to go through the procedure and be able to calculate it going through the steps. So what are you adding? So plus and minus, what is this formula? Being able to compute it along the way. Uh, but it doesn't hurt to know also how to do it on your calculator. Um, it's a good idea to do it both ways. That way you, know, you can show your work, show that you can follow through the procedure and understand what's going on. Um, but then you can also check yourself with your, your um, calculator. And that's that.